Hey everyone, it looks like we are live. How are you doing today? Hope everyone had a great Wednesday and you had, uh, you know, a good uh, earlier week and weekend and looking forward to a fun weekend coming up. Happy Easter, belated Easter. And so <clears throat> let's see who we have here today. We have Patty all the way from Illinois. How are you? We have Mr. Leahy <clears throat> all the way from Ohio. So great to see you both. And we have Colette all the way from Wisconsin. How are you today? So glad you are here. As you can hear, I'm getting over the cold. Uh, still a little hoarse, but that's okay. We're on Mr. Brad all the way from from Maryland. How are you, sir? Great to see you. So glad you're here. I uh, love your work. So that's cool. So today we're <clears throat> we're continuing to work on uh, uh, let's see. We're continuing to work on Mr. Eddie Murphy. Oh look, we have Dwayne in the house. Good to see you, San Luis de Obispo. So glad you're here. And how's everything going there, sir? <clears throat> so glad Mr. Mr. Newland is here, so that's great. Yeah, you know, <clears throat> so this is the first time I only used the cough medicine twice. I used I was drinking it like Coca-Cola during the week, but I'm doing much better. Um, a lot less coughing, not no coughing, but a lot less. JC, how's it going? All the way from the Atlanta area. Good to see you. How is everything? So glad you're here, sir. <coughs> oh, thank you, Sam, Mr. Steve. And so we're going to be working on his head again, his portrait. <coughs> because when we left off, we started working on the the darks so we are at the next to the darkest darks and then we'll we'll work on the darkest darks after this so we're mixing as we're going our colors and and then we're going to move down to some of the darkest darks in his hand and then we'll work on the the, the jacket today mr michael mcglung how are you great to see you i'm feeling better thank you sir so glad you're here from the Maryland area. <clears throat> <clears throat> Let's see, we got water, so we'll make good use of that. Funny thing is, I did sound a little better earlier. Maybe I need a cough drop. So, we'll go that route. Maybe I'm just excited to see everybody, so that's why my voice is going. Mr. Ryan, all the way from Canada, how are you, sir? <clears throat> <clears throat> so glad to see you, sir. So, how's everything? Okay, so let's go ahead and get my glasses. And we are going to... And I appreciate the well wishes there, Michael. Thank you, sir. So, good to have JC in the house. So glad you're here. How you been, sir? So for the most part in this painting, we're using, we're, we're using for the most part, the illustration colors. But I'm not doing too much scratching or erasing, not too much. If any, just very little. Oh, been busy. Busy's good. I hope you're getting time to take it easy and relax. You know, that's important too, sir. But I know with a family and, you know, working hard, it's not always the easiest thing to do, right, JC? And let's move this over. Put this right here. One of these right here. Uh, 
and let's come over here move this so it looks like a lot of times these shields they shift so we're gonna worry about one side at a time so we're gonna go ahead and mix the darkest darks on him let me pull him up in pure ref and let and see you later guys no more my image there we go what wrong got rid of Eddie and kept me we want to do this okay that's better guys and so great so great to see you everybody thanks for hanging with me so now we're gonna worry about this side and let me pull it up on pure ref there he is okay great so there's Eddie Now, I'm a little more pinky than the reference, and I'm going to glaze that to fix it, you know? But the main thing was to get the values, to get the, the you know, the, the chroma, you know, the right hues. Now we just have to adjust very lightly. Oh, cool. Michael says he got to take his Corvette painting to work and clear it. Very nice. That's a great painting, sir really love it okay so we're gonna get my these guys we, we all have a million of them right so we'll put some of these over here and now I'm gonna find out what my darkest dark is and I'm gonna come right over here That's pretty dark. I don't want to go that dark. Let's see. Maybe right here. It's a little darker than that. Alright, so let's let's go find that color. I mean to the naked eye it looks black, but it really isn't. It has a lot of color in it. And Come over here. Okay, so I know what I got to do, and let's just go do it. Got some illustration black. Ah, oh, thanks, JC. I appreciate it. JC says that Eddie's looking sharp. Thank you so much for that. And now I'm looking for my hue. And okay so I got my cup that's true Ryan that is so true he's looking much better than I'm sounding that's for sure in total agreement huh <laughs> let's see it's gonna make sure I get that base hue correct And where's my famous stirring stick? So this first color has to be correct. And, you know, you'll do the eye test, you know, and see what you feel about it. And then we're going to 4011 it a little bit. Just a tad. And then, let's make this happen. Because we got to make this pretty dark. Wow, Michael, thank you so much for the super chat, my friend. I really appreciate that. Thank you. And that really, really makes me feel better. My voice is going to be sounding really good very soon. So, thank you for that, that, like, Jolt that tonic. That's really wonderful, sir. I already feel better. Thank you, Michael. Thank you so much. So you see I'm getting close right now. And now my job is to get closer. The black, black is always a really strong color. You know, it doesn't take prisoners. So we have to be careful with it. I 
And this is very close. Look at that. See, it's definitely not black. You can see it in the... See how it's definitely not black, but it's super dark. And I'm going to thin it out even more. And let's thin that out a little bit more with 4011. Michael, I really appreciate you, my friend. Uh, I appreciate your friendship and really appreciate uh, your talent and sharing it with us all. And continuing to inspire. I'm inspired by your work, sir. I want you to know that. That's right. At least a, at least one of these big packages, right, sir? <laughs> <coughs> Cough drops have been a lifesaver. So here we are. We have this here. And I'm going to be looking for a... One of my uh, famous little screens here. We're going to put that over the airbrush like so. And then we're going to take this. And we're just going to pour some of that in. Not much at first. So what that did, it kind of kept us from having any kind of, uh, you know, little chunkies get in there. And now I'm just going to test my airbrush, making sure it's working correctly. <coughs> it's not working optimally, but it's working okay. <coughs> yes, yeah, Stephen asks, how's the, the uh, bridge going? And... Oh, within a week. Wow, that's amazing, Brad. Yeah, it's been, we had really bad weather here in the Northeast. Today it was really scary going to the store. Okay, so now let me just uh, clean up my work area here. And now we're ready to come in with that dark color off to this side here. And let me make sure I get all my materials as soon as I find him. Here he is. Okay, great. So along this edge is this this dark. I'm gonna lower my air pressure just a bit. And I'm pumping that trigger to maintain a sense of texture move this over so my PSI is around 25 PSI but I choke it down with the pack valve and so we're looking at probably about 15 PSI So yesterday when we did the next darkest color in this, coming in now with the <coughs> with the darker color, it was very well set up from last week, which is good. That's what we want. may have to raise that air pressure just a tad. On this side, it's nice and dark. There we go. And you see, his likeness, it will come together when things fall together, you know? They come together when they fall together. Okay, now, 
let's see where else can we hit this dark so what I'm going to do right underneath his lip there we have this nice dark so I'm just gonna move this aside put this here and we have this beautiful dark and you want to go perpendicular and not parallel the reason is, is that you have control where you're going if I was going parallel I may go too far and that would not be good you know and Steve says Tim I can't remember do you modify the 105 also I mean other than swapping out the high roller trigger Yes, the Extreme Patriot 105 is modified the same way. That that long trigger that's like that's gone get you know that gets removed automatically. But all the modifications that are on the Extreme Patriot Arrow are done here. Uh, the advantage with this is the larger cup, of course. But there's different qualities of the 105 which I like. It's a different feel. And, but the same detail, which is good. Great question, sir. And, let's see. Okay, very good, good conversation happening out there. And you see how I took care of that. And, so now let's make sure our airbrush is working tip-top. So I can definitely see that a, I could raise the pressure and maybe thin it out a little bit with uh, 4011, just a little bit. And also blow it out, making sure that it's not something that's a little chunky in there or something. <coughs> Oh, see that much? It's flowing much better. Not perfect, but much better. Okay, so now I have a little more confidence that I can handle this area. Right there. And let me see how... Now, this is kind of paintbrush technique area, but I, too, like to live dangerously, as Austin Powers would say. It's not flowing as well as I would like it to, but I've been sick and I haven't been able to thoroughly clean my airbrush last week, and I'm kind of paying the price for it. So let's see what we have. We're just going to move this aside, and Dundalk, that's, a, uh, that's also a city in Ireland. I think I have family there. Let's see. See, nice, nice sharp edge. And also lets us know that we can darken other areas. But right along here, there's a nice dark. So I do like the way that turned out. And let's see, along the hairline, we have a nice dark. So let's make sure that this evens out. So, you know, what the strategy is, is since these personalized shields or stencils 
they shrink and grow as you paint on them. You know, as they get wet and dry. So, you can only use them several times. And then you just have to kind of use one side because they lose the integrity, you know. <coughs> wow. The closest route to you would have been the bridge. Unbelievable. That is such scary stuff. And now everything that's scary happens, happens on film, right? Everything is video, you know, video filmed. It's crazy. You know, all these disasters is like sometimes different angles and just strange times we live in. Okay, so let's work on the edge of the hair. This dark. And I don't want to, definitely don't want to cross spray over his ear. So you want to, you want to be able to do something like this. There you go. <coughs> and then right here, it's nice and dark. And there's no rush with all of this. Just take your time. And in here, you know, definitely paintbrush area. I don't want to be a cowboy and try and get it in one, one swoop. I don't think that's effective. Uh, it's too chancy, too risky. <coughs> Let's see if there's some nice darks on his hand that we may be able to get. There you go, so we're able to hit that. There we go. And maybe over here by his watch. Right there. And I didn't put his ring in there. Didn't feel it was needed. Wasn't worth the work. And okay, you see what I missed? <coughs> Hey, Mr. Brad Mummery, how's it going, sir? Great to see you. How's life over there in uh, in Manitoba? That is so cool that you're here. So maybe we can do some paintbrush techniques here. Because last week we did all airbrush techniques. Maybe we can introduce some paintbrush techniques and maybe start working on some of the rich colors of his jacket. That would be fun. And then some glazing. Uh, glazing is typically an, an oil painting technique, but I love doing it in airbrush too. Okay, so there we are. Getting some, some nice, nice contrast here. The trick is, is to be patient, right? That's very important uh, to be very, very patient when doing this stuff. And we'll move Eddie over just a tad so we can bring the wet palette over. <coughs> Magnets are good, but they often get in the way, as you all know. So everything has a drawback. Everything. Okay, wet palette is still wet, and that, that's amazing. So that makes me happy. And don't worry, you know, use the brushes. Don't save them for a rainy day. Use them. No, they do you no good sitting there. Ruin them if you have to. If it makes for a better painting, then make it happen. So I'm looking to ruin an air, a paintbrush right now. 
Let's see. Do I have any paint touches to ruin? Uh, this is a nice airbrush right here. I'm going to take that wonderful dark color that I had and I am going to bring that to my wet palette. And let me get a cup of water so we can clean our brushes out. Mr. Dwayne, thank you so much for the super chat, my friend. That works better than a cough drop. I appreciate that, sir. Thank you for your, always thank you for your amazing generosity and your friendship, sir. Look forward to <coughs> hearing <coughs> all your expertise. And your thoughts and your opinions, they mean so much to me in the group. So I don't hold that lightly. Thank you so much, my friend. And, you know, the Super Chats really help immensely. And almost as much as your great comments, sir. And <coughs> just want to say thank you. Thank you so much. It's an honor to for you to come by every Wednesday and hang out. Definitely an honor. We're all better artists because of it. So I really hate this paintbrush. And you know what I do when I hate a paintbrush? I break it. So, uh, Colette, thank you so much for the amazing super chat. Thank you so much. <coughs> I can't sing, but I can go yes. And that is so amazing. So incredibly generous. Uh, <coughs> I appreciate you so much, Colette. Thank you. Thank you for all your encouragement and your friendship. And live streams are so much better that you're a part of them. Just thank you. That is so great. So I'm trying this brush right here. You all are just so wonderful to me and I thank you. So this is a... Hmm... I think this is one of the Rosemary and Company, which is really great. Oh, no, I appreciate you, Colette, and, and everyone. I appreciate you so much. So I'm just hitting his nostrils. And we're going we're gonna to use these brushes to really accentuate. Yeah, or James Earl Jones, right? <laughs> I definitely could do, you know, voiceovers for a documentary right now. Definitely doesn't sound like me, that's for sure. And once again, thank you, Dwayne. Thank you, Colette. And thank you, Michael. Thank you so much, my friends. See, this is not, this is just smarter to do these tech, these details uh, with the paintbrush. It's just smarter and the paintbrush, quite frankly, does a better job at it. Oh, Patty, have a great night. Thank you so much for hanging. And don't work too hard over there in, uh, in Illinois. And uh, always wonderful to see you. Yes, karaoke, that's true. That is so true. I should do karaoke. And right here in the corner of the, eye, of the mouth, I should have handled that from the very beginning with the paintbrush. And then... Then definitely 
the mustache. I can definitely get the detail of the mustache much more effectively with the paintbrush. And it's just, it's fun to switch on and off, right, Steve? Going from, you know, working with the airbrush and, you know, with the paintbrush kind of feels liberating, you know? Get to step out of the vehicle. And notice I, I'm doing a lot of moving around. I'm not trying to, you know, solve all the equations at once. Uh, just kind of uh, darkening everything slowly and together, you know, slow and together. Plenty of time, plenty of time to get in there. You know, let's just kind of walk in the park sort of thing. Enjoy the process because what else do we have? I mean, the fun of doing it and, you know, how each individual, <coughs> individual uh, part of the painting just little by little starts getting easier. And that's, and that's the joy of it. Not the joy of painting. That's Mr. Bob Ross's shtick. But just the, the joy of creating, you know. And that's what it is. And, oh, Michael says he's starting to get used to the paintbrush and liking it. That's great. And your work is really showing that, Michael. So keep at it. You're really kicking butt. Keep going. So we're not worried about the likeness. I mean, that's the ultimate goal. But we're not we're not worried about getting it we know it'll happen as long as we take care of what we have to take care of large shapes you know the values the saturation the hue all that fun stuff you know it it's so funny. I see a lot of artists where they paint celebrities and they get celebrities to, you know, go look at the painting or even just mention it on social media. That never happened to me. Not once. One of these days, it might happen with Eddie Murphy. He's from the same, same county in New Jersey. And let's go ahead and hit some nice darks in his hair. And we don't have to get the hairs perfect, but we have to get the, the direction of the hairs right. You know, the nature of the hairs. That's what's important. I'm going to go back to some of these hairs here. Almost like the brick wall. You don't have to paint every brick. You just have to give an indication of the pattern. And then go from there. <coughs> now, one of the caveats is, is that his eyebrow here is almost non-existent and oh Ryan says Tim this is an older piece you are continuing or did you recently start it this was an older piece 
<clears throat> that I was doing as a demo. And, you know, then I stopped it. And now I'm just kind of picking up where I left off. Because I felt that there was a lot of really good... Uh, a lot of good color theory in this. Which I thought was really good. So, one of the reasons why I brought it out and back up. I was always going to... Everything I start, I, I definitely try and finish everything I start. Whether I love it or hate it. You know, it's important to finish everything you start. You don't learn from something you don't complete. You learn from something that you you fight through. And, you know, you'll learn not to do something that you didn't like in the painting. But just try not to abandon it. There's so much m richer uh, learning experience from from pushing yourself to actually finishing it. So that's very, very important in my book. And let's see here. Make sure we clean this brush. <clears throat> All right, so now what we can do is let's just uh, go ahead and maybe start working on the jacket. That could be good. Hopefully I'll have the jacket stencil otherwise going to make my life a lot harder. We're going to go back to the airbrush. I think we do have the jacket only. And that's, that's a relief. At least that's what it appears. Yes. I just have to be careful with his And always go outside your comfort zone, you know, uh, make sure you push yourself because that's when great things happen. That's where the, the growth is and the new plateaus, you know, when we, we say to ourselves, we're going to draw caution in the wind. We never did something like that before, but that just makes us want to do it more. Okay, so now <clears throat> what I want to do, and I'll see if there's hand. No, I don't think so. I think the hand's in my last apartment, so that's not good. We're a little bit off, so if you feel you're a little bit off, take the time to fix it. Because you're going to have a heck of a lot more time trying to... Uh, put in contour that isn't there. And again, we're going to worry about one side at a time. So I'm going to worry about his trapezius and his neck area right here. And, okay. Always be extra careful. So, we're going to put our wet palette aside. And we're going to cover that. No use getting it dry, so always cover it when you're not using it. And so I'm going to go to the color mixing, and we're going to figure out what is the color of the color here. So we're going to hit the lighter area again, and let's see what we have here. Okay. And we're going to try and get that color pretty quick. And we're going to make sure it matches. Probably can go a little bit darker. Uh, that looks better. Yes, okay. I, I isolated the color. Now let's get the ingredients. I know what color. Let's get the percentages. Okay. 
Okay. All right, let's make this happen. <coughs> so, find our color, our main color. Yeah, not feeling too well. You know, there was a lot of uh, a lot of messiness in my studio, where I normally would have everything clean. I'm going to be using a combination of Wicked and Illustration right now, so that's good. And Brian says, loving Eddie, but have to check out for a bit. Thank you so much, my friend. Always a pleasure. And thank you so much hanging out from all the way from Canada. Love my Canadian friends. Okay, so. So now we have to try and get the right color. And, okay. One last element. Okay, color wheel is always going to help you. So always make sure this is definitely your best friend. And remember, when you can't find something, it's behind something. There it is, behind everything. Make sure I get everything okay. I definitely see where we need to go to get this color. Let's see what this does. Let's see, that's pretty close, but almost, almost there. And all right. And we don't have to 4011. I this is good. That's pretty close on the money. But since my airbrush is not working too great today, I'm going to 4011 it a little bit. And let's mix this up really good because we do have we do have the the wicked and we do have the mixing with the illustration colors. So we want to make sure this is really nice and it's drippy. A little bit on the thick side. Michael says, I like finishing paintings even though they fight him sometimes. But it is the fun part. Yes, it is the challenge to bring it all together. And that's so important, sir. Okay, we're going to use the Extreme Patriot Arrow by Badger. Uh, customized by myself. For myself. So this is the color that we came up with. Let's take a look. Okay, so let's go ahead. Don't worry if the colors are not believable. Just keep going. They are believable, but they won't look believable to themselves. The other colors have to be realized with them, alongside them. So it's not going to look right until the other colors are there. And that's definitely the case. Whoop, put that right on the edge. I'm about three and a half inches away, and that's important distance, especially when you want nice gradations, 
That's always good. This color is very different than other areas of the painting. But we want to see if it's anywhere else, and it really isn't. So this color right here is definitely his own thing going on. And I went for the mid-tone, not the light, because I want to come in and lighten that up. But not until I see that, um, once I put in that dark, that it works. So, um, even though I just made all that paint, now I have to put it aside. But before I do... Let's go ahead and put a little lighter version of that in here. We're going to add some, some white to this. <coughs> Let's see. Where's my illustration white? And I really don't want to mix it in the airbrush because I'm not good at that. So I'll do it the old-fashioned way. Uh, but Mr. Leahy does it great in the airbrush. He's fantastic at that technique. I'm not there yet. Let's see what this does. <coughs> okay, so... Here's a lighter color. This isn't so much color theory as, you know, going with your gut. And sometimes going with your gut is not the best. But there's only one way to find out. And that's to attack it. And you guys are here to witness it. For better or for worse. And, <clears throat> oh, looks into this, Michael's next one, he has a challenge, uh, deers in near an old barn, that is great, I'm gonna love that. Just ever so light, and I think it works. So my thinking is a lot of times when you have like a mid-tone color, if you just lighten it with a tint or, or with a shade and keep the original ingredients, you should be okay. Here we go. Just lightening that up a little bit. Now I'm going to come in with that dark. So... We're going to go back in the other airbrush right here, <coughs> and we're going to hit a really deep dark blue. So first I'm going to expel this color, you know, the darkest dark on his skin. Kind of moving down the seat of my pants here, but that's okay. We kind of get in that groove, don't we? This airbrush is being a little temperamental today. Like I said, I didn't clean it the way I should because I was feeling horrible. But we're going to go forward anyway. Let's see. We're going to put this over here. <coughs> and now I'm going to look for the dark of this collar there. The really dark. Uh, it's not necessarily going to be part of this color, so because it's a different part of different fabric, so I wouldn't want to take that chance. So I'm going to try and discover that color on its own, and okay, I have an idea. It's super dark, and. Not 
don't make sense, let's go ahead and look at it again. Okay, that makes a little more sense. Okay. Okay, it's very similar to the last color. Very, very similar in its ingredients. Okay. All right, so what I'm going to do, in this case it does work, is I'm going to make a shade of this. So we're going to put this over here. <coughs> and I'm going to add some illustration black. <coughs> now, I didn't just wing it. I actually, with my color mixing method, I really explored it. Right? And came at it, you know, with a non-partial kind of attitude, right? Just looking at it a different way without having any kind of preconceived notion. And that's a, a great way to come at it. Okay, so here we are. We're going to put this in. It's a little lighter than I want. I'm going to go darker. But it's a little bit lighter than what I want. But you guys will see, you know, my thinking. See, next to the other color, it's quite dark. So, now let's go ahead and uh, get this thing. It's interesting, because of the black, it's giving it a navy color. A navy blue color, which is what it has. Let me get to the main camera so I can see what you guys see. Okay, guys, hold that thought. I'm going to use the, the bathroom real, real quick. I'll be right back, guys. Thanks for holding.
very sorry about that, guys. Hope it didn't take too long. The bathroom is upstairs, so I have to come all the way up there. But thank you for hanging, waiting for me. I appreciate it. Make sure I have the right airbrush here. Yes. Okay, so we'll continue here. And like I said, we're not trying to solve every equation immediately, right? We're taking our time <coughs> and know that we have to make adjustments as we go. And right here. Now this dark is a little bit different than that. But I think it's very close. <coughs> and we're just gonna kind of work this together. And we're moving towards what we want. You know, it's not gonna happen right away but we have the right colors and we're just just gonna sketch right it's important to sketch what you want and we have this nice dark right over here on this side and there's gonna be even darker blues here definitely some darker blues And now I'm going to come back with this lighter blue. <coughs> and the best we can do is to see what it's going to do. How it will react. And there's no blue shift because it's blue. Can't get any bluer than it is. But we're getting nice flow from the from the airbrush, which is nice. And now what we can do, <coughs> we can take these colors and before we move further along, we're going to use our paintbrush <coughs> to kind of do some of the details. Then we'll put the shield back on, but you can see where we're going we're heading and we have our so it's this kind of lighter blue color here and that might be the answer to the detail in his his jacket I think it is Way down here, you kind of want to triangulate where things start and end. Kind of bring that light color down. <coughs> and I like dry brushing, as everyone knows. And let's see. Right over here. And it's great because we can come in with a darker blue and with the paintbrush really do something nice here. This is more like a teaching exercise for everyone. It's not necessarily what I would pick. 
as my subject matter. Not that A. Murphy is not a great subject to paint. He really is. Very talented guy. <coughs> and a Jersey guy, so can't go wrong there. Let's see here. Put in some of the texture here. And you just, what you can do is dry brush it even more to get that kind of texture that we're looking for. Because his collar is different than the rest of the jacket. Collar is more like a, like a felt. Just bring that in. And we can put in little darks in there too to really get the texture, which is nice. And it's interesting, it looked, the colors look pretty pinky before. But I think coming in with these cold colors really made the colors become more orange. Because remember, the colors are affected by what's next to it. And we have some of this texture over here. And it's nice because you can have a combination of Wicked and Illustration colors. They work very well together. And we can come even deeper with the colors, which is great. There's a little bit of reflected light on the bottom here. There we go. <coughs> hey, Bobby, how's it going, sir? Good to see you. So glad you're here, my friend. We're just working hard on Mr. Eddie Murphy. Okay, so kind of liking this, and maybe we'll put a little more texture here. What I'm going to try is I'm going to take the dark blue. And we're going to see if we can add some texture with the dark blue if it's not going to blow things out. But we can always check. Right? Just dry brush this to death. And let's start up here. Oh yeah, it's adding to the texture. Which is good. And it's not like a one and done, right? You're going to come back in, <coughs> work on texture as we go. Just keep, keep looking at the one second rule, right? Keep making sure you're paying attention to what's happening. And make sure that we don't oversimplify. So now um, I'm kind of happy with what we did with the texture, a little bit of detail on the color, that sort of thing. Now we can come back in with the darkest dark in the airbrush. <coughs> and we can start redefining some of the areas. Kind of getting our deep dark going.
and maybe dust over the whole thing. Kind of, you know, make it more unified. We can come back in with the highlights later. Okay, now we don't want to bring this color down here because it's a definitely different blue happening. And if I want to glaze, I just increase my distance so the blue is super transparent, you know? There we go. Okay. A good start, right? I have to say. It's a good start. That's what we want. <coughs> All right. And let's see what I missed. Uh, let's see. Michael says, can I get a vote here on the next car? A 1970 and one half Chevrolet Camaro SS or a 1961? Oh, definitely the Camaro. Being a old Camaro owner. I owned 77 and uh, just love that car. And the 70 is remarkably close to the 77. There we go. Okay. So now we have a different blue going on in the jacket, right? So we're going to hit the light of the jacket now. <clears throat> and how are we going to do that? We don't know. But no, I'm just kidding. Let's see. This is more of a green blue. Blue green. Or turquoise. Uh... <coughs> oh, Ford guy. Fords are great. Yes. So you were partial to the Firebirds, huh? <coughs> so now, let's get this blue-green color. And we'll find it. Yeah, definitely a turquoise thing going on. So now we'll... Move on over here. Make sure that's the case. Yeah, it's a, a little more green. It's not like crazy far away. A tiny shift to green. Okay. Let's see what we have here. Okay, see what's going on here. And... <coughs> okay, so... Alright, so let's make this happen, guys. So, it's a little bit on the blue-green side. So, let's see if we can find that. We're probably going to have to mix the blue-green. <coughs> so, mostly blue with some green in it. Oh, yeah, the Firebirds were great, weren't they? Oh, also the Dusters were great. You know, I hated the Dodge Darts. I don't know why. I think I didn't like the boxiness of it, you know? But that was my least favorite car growing up. I know, it's, you know, kind of unfair. I mean, it is a great car. They were made amazing. Michael says, also a 1937 Studebaker Coupe Express truck. Wow, that's wild. All right, so now we have this. And favorite color in mine, black. <coughs> huh. 
Now we have to be careful with black. Even if when you're working with black, some formulations will give you, you know, what you need to put in. You got to make sure that you use discretion. And now I'm going to 4011 uh, Unowatches out of this. Let's see. Where did it go? Maybe I'm going to make an uh, intuitive decision here. It's looking very close. Just going to lighten that a tad. And just a little more blue because it was a little on the too green let's see this is the secret sauce okay that's looking pretty darn close to our target color so I'm going to 4011 it quite a bit because I <coughs> I want it thinned out a lot of ways to lighten the color. Thinning it out is a is a watercolor way, but it works nonetheless. So you see, we we nailed that color. It is different from the other color that we had. A whole different blue, whole different chemistry, different DNA, and that's what you have to do. You have to realize we have to realize <coughs> that much of the color that we're using has a DNA and we got to make sure that we at least get the right DNA which is so so crucial even though I have a similar blue in there it's even more important to clean out the blue that's there because it will shift it dramatically okay now we'll test this out to make sure it's what we're looking for on paper. And get rid of whatever's in the chamber, so to speak. Okay. Let's see. And we are going to go here. Okay, let's take a look. This is definitely the bluish green that we're we're searching for. And just because you're mixing the color right does not mean that you change your approach to painting. You know, it's nice to have the ability to find the color, <coughs> but it doesn't change the fact that you still have to Learn how to, you know, put in the midtones, then the lights, then the darks. But you definitely can see it's a different blue. If we were to put the same blue, it just wouldn't be a representation. I'm about three inches away. So this blue you can see has a lot more green to it. And as we paint it, it's going to have a different texture. It's going to have a lot more sheen to it.
And uh, Bobby says, Tim, with the India inks, do you have colors too? Or just, well, right now it's just the uh, Airbrush India inks, which is black. I do have, I'm in the process of making a batch of the sepia. I do have sepia, which is good. I don't want to lose my pencil drawing on there. Well, not pencil, but my India ink underpainting. So I'm very careful not to go too dark. Because that will just get rid of my preparation. <coughs> See how that blue is starting to look dramatically different? And then this blue right here is actually much different than the other blues and we're going to go over that and uh so it's just very funny how how we think we have a blue jacket but it's a lot deeper than that I'm going to put the shield back on because I want to make sure that I don't mess up the edge here. <coughs> I wish I have a little bit of overspray there. Nothing we can fix. As photographers say, I'll clean it up in post, you know, but we don't have that ability. <coughs> but we clean it up when we're finishing the painting, getting rid of any edges or weirdness that happened <coughs> during the piece, you know. So, Oh, so Michael said he started saving some old calendars and hot rods on them. He picked them up at the flea market and the yard sales. Very cool. Probably quite a collection. And airbrush is just like every other fine art medium is that you have to construct your painting. <clears throat> There's no shortcuts. There really isn't. You know, I'm just building this up as if I would build up anything else. See, look at that tip drive. That's massive. Look at this. This is really like the worst case of tip dry I ever seen. Look at this. Whoa. Look at that. See that? That's quite scary. You can just see <coughs> how we have to stay on top of that. <coughs> huh. 
I'm gonna focus it real quick. There we go. Okay. And let's see here. And since you have that color in your airbrush, make sure you use it to its potential. And here's the uh, fading dot right here. See how that? See how I'm just I'm just flipping my wrist, and I'm getting it to fade up. I'm not moving the airbrush. I'm just flicking the wrist. And those are things that you need to you need to to practice. Those they'll go a long way. It's like practicing free throws in the in the backyard. When game time, it's just gonna happen. <coughs> Okay, so maybe just a little deeper here. <coughs> we want to make sure we have nice coverage. Cover that under. Because we're looking for surface texture as well. Any painting, you arrive at that surface texture. Hey, Raul, how's it going? Oh, yeah, so with my Extreme Patriot Arrow custom... Uh, and the 105, but I make sure the needle is way out there. That's the whole secret to that's the secret sauce. A lot of airbrush companies haven't caught on to that, but let them figure it out. And so, so now what we're going to do is we're going to now I do a different technique where. <coughs> Doing the erasing is not as effective, but let's see what happens here. So we can do a little bit of erasing, but one of the reasons why I don't like it because it dulls the color. <coughs> and I want this to be a rich color. So that's why I'm not really keen on erasing. I'd rather mix that rich color. <laughs> then go ahead and, you know, try and erase it and then go over it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to look for this really deep blue here, which would be a, this color that we just mixed here, it would be a shade of this. Now I'm going to go ahead and make this even darker. Gonna put some more of my illustration uh, 5051 by Createx, of course. Best paint company in the world. Put a couple of drops in there, like so. <coughs> Raul from New Jersey, how's life treating you, sir? There we go. Now we have a nice, rich, dark. And remember, you can always lighten this up by just adding some <coughs> 4011 <coughs> or other things to lighten it up. Let's see what this does. That's a nice dark. Still has rich color in it though, you know? And now we're going to do is we had this with the Extreme Patriot 10 with Extreme Patriot Arrow, we have a oh, we have a light blue in there. So we'll leave that alone. And we'll expel this color here. That nice bluish green we could use later if I was feeling up to it but I'm not <laughs> I'll just mix that again or maybe I'll save it in a tiny bottle 
but let's uh, get rid of some of the color that's in here, clean it out a bit. <coughs> Raul says he's okay trying to maintain one day at a time. Oh, loving my work. Thank you, sir. Yeah, one day at a time. That's all I can handle, my friend. I can't handle 15 minutes more. It's not easy. <coughs> Michael says, Tim, when you when you put the shellac over it, doesn't it lighten it up, brighten it up? It actually kind of dulls it. And what's interesting about the dulling of it, but it unifies it. So it unifies the underpainting. So I have a much more unified area to work with. And it's to our benefit. Uh, is it the best? I'm not sure. I'm not going to say it's the best. Uh, I'm enjoying the technique. No one else does it. So I like being different. It's archival and all that good stuff. <clears throat> but you got to give something to get something, right? And I love the surface. It's like working on glass. Even though it's on paper, it's like working on glass after you shellac. So here we have this beautiful dark blue. Oh, it's so beautiful. See that blue right there? I love it. And that's, it's a different value and everything from the color. So it's important to pay attention to what's happening. So we're in the 11 o'clock hour, which is great. And, you know, we're not doing the most fun part, which is his jacket. But it's important. So we're hitting some of the really dark darks. We'll just hit some of these real nice parks over here. Just trying to get a little depth. Oh, you clear coat it. Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah, clear coating does something really special <coughs> because it, you know, it. It sort of evens out everything and brings everything to life. It's like I use I use this stuff right here. I know I'm going to get my hands sticky. But this right here, which is uh, Gamvar Gloss. And I use that on my airbrush paintings. And it's really great. It, it looks really fantastic. I apply it with a brush. The good thing about the Gamvar is if I mess up, <clears throat> or maybe I forgot to sign it, or maybe I forgot to do one bit of detail, I could actually get rid of that, uh, which is really good. Just by using uh, mineral spirits, you can actually pull that up. So let's say 100 years from now, and my painting becomes famous, God help me, and now I'll be able to they'll be able to restore it and get rid of the varnish and make it look like it was brand new. So from a, conversa a conservation standpoint, my technique is really good, but there's nothing like a clear coat. That looks the best. <coughs> it really does. I want to learn clear coat this year. <clears throat> so 
start hitting some texture just a little bit here and there and then deep in this dark remember we're always looking for surface texture Let's see what we have so far. And I think we can probably come in with some lights right now and, you know, continue working back and forth. Let's see what we have. Okay, so the jacket's coming along nice, right? I have to be happy with it. <coughs> Oh, look at that. Michael uh, locked it down with 4050 before. Oh, that's great. That's nice. <coughs> that's that's a really, that's a lot of knowledge you have with that stuff. I can tell, Michael. Definitely. And I'll be picking your brain with that whenever I can. Okay, let's come back here. Same if I was oil painting. This is how I would basically build up the fabric. And it's a nice balance between airbrush and paintbrush, isn't it? See that? The uh, <coughs> tip dry is really quite interesting. You don't get that kind of tip dry when using just Wicked. You know, of all the months I've been working on Wicked, there's not as much tip dry at all. Especially the new Wicked detail. You don't get that. So you get a lot more tip dry when you're working with the illustration colors. Uh, like I said, you got to give something... If you give something, you gotta get something. If you, you know, get something, you gotta give something. <clears throat> so it's very, very important to realize there's gonna be a trade-off. If you're living in San Francisco, you're gonna have earthquakes. If you're living in in uh, Hawaii, you have volcanoes and fires and all that horrible stuff. There's always a trade-off. Same thing with paint. Always, always a trade-off. And, you know, we're going to simplify his jacket and everything, right? Okay, so, <clears throat> really nice. So, I do have that light color. But, it's a different light color, right? It really is. So when we look at the light of his collar, it's a lot different than what's going on in the light of his jacket. So remember our original color before we used the tint. I mean, we use a shade. So let's use a tint of this, right? Let's do that. Why not? We'll go to the loony bin together. So let's see. And Raul says that my one thin coat of Jess Clear Gesso works great and PVA size is cheap. That's cool. And he says he uses a technique with sealing the paper with shellac. Oh, cool. And it worked spectacularly. The only issue he has was the cost. So he tried sizing product with the PVA Gamblin two coats. Okay, definitely. And that's the great thing, you know, is just, you know, keep playing with it. Find your own secret sauce. And and that, I think, is one of the goals of an artist is to find our secret sauce. You know, get ideas. I get ideas from you guys. You guys get 
he gives to me for that stuff. Let's put this in here. This might work. We're going to go into the brush technique. <coughs> Maybe. Let's see. Let's see what this does. Okay, so I like that much better than the erasing. Because the erasing was a gray, ugly color, and this is like pigment, so it's much better. <coughs> And this is just playing around, you know, it's, I don't know if this is exactly what I want, but, and just kind of, kind of wing it. And I kind of like it because I'm staying in the same family of color. And Michael says he loves learning from all you people. Thank you so much on, from me. And, and I agree. I learned from everyone, you know, there's so much to learn from all the artists here. And that is so true. Make sure I dry brush this. Because I don't want to lose the color underneath. So by dry brushing, I'm kind of working with the color underneath. And this is called scumbling. Which is over a darker color. Kind of a darker light color. And you are kind of scumbling a wet color over a dark color. And I'm working on the large shapes first. Excuse me, guys, and girls. And I'm going to move around a lot. One of the reasons why I like moving around a lot is because I will see the forest and not the trees. I have to make sure that I'm paying attention to the forest. And I could actually soften this up with the airbrush later, but I'm establishing areas of, of contrast. Now let's say <coughs> we'll bring back my wet palette, right? Because here I am working like I don't have a wet palette. And we'll bring this over. Now I got cups everywhere. So at the end of the day, it gets a little crazy as far as space is concerned. And it definitely is not the final frontier. Okay, so here's my thinking. I have this color right here. Uh-oh.
Let's see. Did I lose? You hear YouTube? According to YouTube, I lost the stream. Let's see. Okay, it looks like we're still live. On my computer, it's showing that it wasn't live. Okay, it looks like we're still live. On my computer. Okay, that was weird. But, okay, so we're still going. And let's go ahead. And so as you see, I have my main color here. Sorry about that. And I want to lighten it up. So I'm going to take some of my illustration white. And I'm going to put that right next to it. That's a lot. And so I may want to lighten it up a bit, right? And then also I may want to darken it up a bit. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. Now you guys can see it, right? You guys uh, see everything, so that's good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my original dark color. I'm going to put that over here. So now I'll have a dark version and a light version. Okay, cool. Yeah, the uh, YouTube is saying that it's not live. And that's what's really weird. You know, the YouTube software. <coughs> so that was kind of upsetting. So you see how it's lighter now, but it's not like too light. And what I need to do is my scrap paper which is right over here just make sure I get the dry brush get rid of the excess moisture and now I have a color that's lighter but not too not too light in my opinion Yeah, it's, uh, <coughs> it's interesting, you know, it's technology. It is great and it's an advance, but it's still in its baby stage. And I guess that's what kind of makes it exciting. So this is something that, you know, Rembrandt might handle it this way, you know, looking at the Rembrandt paintings of Hungra from the 19th century French neoclassical painters, you know, how they would handle folds. And that's kind of where I'm coming from, you know, I have such a, you know, deep background in art history. A lot of times I'm handling things not as an airbrush artist would do. <coughs> but as a academic painter would. And now with my new technique of color theory, I have so much more confidence than I did in the past. And, and that's why I'm excited. You know, a lot of times I think, you know, why do this thing, you know, you know, worrying about whether it's gonna be successful. But it's gonna be successful for the artist who is struggling with color and just wants to start having fun with paint and this is going to allow that you know just as, as I was working tonight you know how we were able to you know really concentrate on on painting and not worry so much about getting the right color you know with my method you will find the right color so quick like I'm not going to save these colors why I can mix them 
you know, I can find them and mix them just as fast and they'll be fresh. So you don't have to. And <coughs> that blue right over here, I'm going to put it here and add some white to it and see what this is. And we'll go to dry brush here. Okay, so here is much more accurate. <coughs> but the technique works with everything. It works with dry brush. <coughs> Excuse me. It works with dry brush. It works with airbrush. It works with, with oil paints. And, you know, it's, it's really refreshing. So hopefully by mid-April it should be out. And it will be a really good gift certificate for those who are in the live stream. And of course, our regulars will definitely, even if you're not here, I'll be sending that, that incredible savings to you. And uh, Michael says, yeah, like you said, you go and dissect your paintings and then they're going to say he was sick on this day. <laughs> They felt the trace of <laughs> definitely, you know the uh, what is it that I have over here? The night, the day quill, the day quill. What color is that orange? Oh, it's just day quill. It's funny because I'm I'm over the cold symptoms. It's just the little bit in my throat, you know. And at night, my voice gets worse and worse. Hopefully, next live stream, I'll be 100%, right? <coughs> Definite <coughs> cough drop break here. So, I think we got a lot done. You know, we he worked on his, his jacket and his hand. And, and again, I want to... I want to kind of soften up this edge and I want to get more of that kind of earthy orange color that's in the photograph not necessarily what's what Eddie looks like in life I can only go by the photo you know so having a holes cough drop right now but yeah it's it's a lot of fun and I'm going to come back in with the dark, just working it back and forth for the last couple of minutes. Oh, thanks, Brad. I appreciate that. Always a pleasure. Thanks for hanging out with us. This, this blue tip dries incredibly fast. Let's see if I can be brave enough. Hit some of the dark of that watch. That didn't work out. The airbrush is, you know, definitely wasn't cleaned the way it was when I wasn't feeling good.
hit some darks right next to these kind of highlights here. And just like when we were oil painting, you know, we are taking our time, you know, we don't, we don't have to struggle to, to get it right the first time. That's something that no one should be trying to do. Yeah, you're going to nail the color, that's fine, but you're going to have to do a lot of, you know, a lot of layering to get it right, and you got to give yourself that time. As Steve says, you just need a spa day for the airbrush. So true, so very true, my friend. And Michael, thank you so much for that super chat. I really appreciate it. Dwayne, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Colette. And so Dwayne, Colette, and Michael, thank you so much, guys. I mean, it's really amazing. I just want to, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. I'm going to come in with this blue and I'm actually going to use the blue as a glaze and I'm just gonna hit some of the darks in his veins just rub that in And I like the way that blue actually works. And I'm going to glaze some of this blue right over here. It really works. Right over here. Just ever so lightly. I'm just going to do a blue glaze where the nasal labial fold is. Just real light. And, you know, it's a nice touch to have blue as opposed to just a monochromatic kind of darkening and lighting of color. And just go outside your comfort zone. Yeah, yeah, I can definitely see that in your paintings. Blue and green is definitely your wheelhouse, my friend. I love your color schemes there, Michael. Definitely. And, you know, it's interesting why blue works. And instinctively, without me thinking, is that this, the blue of his, of his jacket is creating... Blue, sh blue in his shadows with the reflected lights. So for some reason, I was seeing it, but I wasn't quite understanding until I thought about it. And we're just going to follow his mandible. 
right here, his jawbone, as it comes out and kind of gets lost as it goes towards his ear, kind of fades, fades away. And guys, we hit the 130 mark. I didn't know how I was going to do this, but I did it. Uh, the live streams are important, a full two hours. So I'm so glad I was able to achieve that today. And it was all because of your great comments and friendship and everything. Just thank you so much for hanging out. This is where we are thus far. I think we're going to play with uh, Eddie Murphy's portrait maybe one more week. And, you know, just, just bring it together, get in some of those really nice details. And I think this is going really well, especially with the color mixing technique. So thank you, Bobby, and thank you so much, Michael. You guys are great. It's always amazing to hang out with you. And, uh, ah, thank you so much, Mr. Steve, and hanging out. Check out Steve's live stream. Tomorrow is it at 1 or 2 tomorrow, uh, Steve. And I think it's at 2 o'clock, uh, 1 o'clock or 2. Uh, just let us know. Oh, 1, 1 p.m. So check out Steve's uh, YouTube channel, 1 p.m. So much fun. So much to learn. And so we'll see you there, guys. And thank you so much. And uh, you guys are amazing. Yes, I made the whole speed, you know, all messed up, right? So thank, take care, guys. Always a pleasure. And I'll talk to you soon.